Um, so I had a question related to evolution. Sure. Uh, so what would you say as Muslims, can we use the argument that like all species can come from a common ancestor with human beings being the exception and human beings coming from a independent origin? <clears throat> yeah. So on this point, uh, usually there's a very surface level answer given and I'm going to give that answer, mm -hmm. but I'm going to show you the problems with that answer. And the answer is yes, right? Okay. Technically, what you said, brother Asad, is correct. We can accept, and there's nothing incoherent or in conflict with Islamic texts to the idea that all of life evolved according to natural selection by evolution, and human beings were uh, a miracle, and Bani Adam and uh, all our entire lineage goes back to uh, the Adamic couple, right? So right. there's nothing incoherent about that. However, they are some serious uh, metaphysic, uh, metaphysical and uh, epistemic issues that arise by giving that sort of answer. Okay. okay. Yeah. So here, here, here are some of the issues. The first problem is if we accept this story, we have not dealt with the elephant in the room, and that is the Darwinian challenge to design. So one of the things that they try and do is they try and get rid of the idea of design in nature by pointing out to uh, this naturalistic uh, story of theirs. So we have to be able to articulate that actually, no, we will not accept this uh, because this has design implications which are problematic for us. So that's one thing to consider. Okay. Another thing to consider is that we wouldn't have dealt with the core issue that they're trying to raise against us. So we can say we'll accept everything that you guys are saying, except for mm -hmm. human beings will make an exception. And they'll say, why? Why are you making that exception? And we'll have right. to go back to, you know, the epistemic weighing. We'll have to go back to, well, we believe the Quran is the word of Allah. And we believe science is ilm al it's the knowledge uh, which is which doesn't give certainty. Therefore, you know, we go back to the philosophy of science, and therefore we, we're just explaining the same thing we were explaining before. So there's that as well. Okay. So you, you have to uh, take that into consideration. The other problem is that um, if we accept um, the, uh, the the this idea that everything evolved except uh, human beings in terms of like uh, from a Darwinian perspective, then um, some of the serious problems with the lies that they've been pumping out, the propaganda they've been pumping out, the the uh, the homogenous structure that they're trying to show amongst biologists that they all agree on this, they all agree on that. We won't have the chance to actually show that this is not true, that this is not what they've been up to, and there are serious problems here. So altogether, I think it's quite dangerous to just say, yes, it's possible, and therefore leave it. Like, you have to you have to say, yes, it's possible. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've previously given the example of Isa al-Islam. You know, Isa al-Islam, if you took out his DNA, you know, people would say he's linked to this. Uh, this is his father, this is his mother, but we know his father... Did not exist. We know that he didn't have a father. Likewise, al uh, Islam did not have a father or a mother. So we have to go back to those philosophical points, those epistemic points. Um, and the other thing which I think is very important to keep in mind is as Muslims, we need to have intellectual courage. Yeah, it's easy. It's honestly easy to say, you know, if, if we're facing, for example, a challenge from liberals or a challenge for feminists or a challenge from meminists or a challenge from scientism or, or Darwinism or whatever, it's easy to, you know, give in and say, well, OK, we'll accept this. And the, the fact is, as Muslims, we have this particular problem for a reason. This is decreed by Allah. This is a test from Allah. This is something, um, you know, that was supposed to happen. And. As Muslims, we should always be uh, at the forefront of intellectual um, uh, bravery. So, you know, we shouldn't um, 
shy away from these theological challenges because the fact is they all back, go back to the same thing, which is the existence of God and God's creative power. Because what is Adam al-Islam except a miracle? Just like the parting of the sea, just like the virgin birth, just like yeah, Ibrahim exactly. Islam. That's all it comes down to. So it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter uh, about these things, right? Um, I would also like uh, to point out some of the stuff uh, uh, on my channel recently I've been covering. Uh, today, for example, I had Casey Luskin on my channel. Uh, he I have is... seen that, yeah. Oh. Exactly. You saw, I mean, people need to know about this. People need to know how evolutionary biologists have been cancelled, how people have lost tenure, how people have been forced to self-censor because of the Darwinian pressure, right? They need to know right. about these things. They need to know, for example, you might have seen, uh, I think uh, this is my fifth time I've had Paul Nelson uh, on my stream. And well. the last stream I did with Paul Nelson, he challenged... Um, you know, this whole uh, nonsense that Darwin has come up with about transitional uh, uh, probabilities, and he challenged it using origination probabil probabilities, which is a novel argument. Um, in, originally, uh, he got it from a philosopher of biology, Elliot Sober, who is, um, you know, uh, I mean, that's where the idea was inspired from. He's he's definitely not a theist, right? He doesn't, he's not a religious person. So, we need to show people that these things exist. You have atheists who don't believe in universal common ancestry. They believe in the forest of life. You have theists who accept it. We need to be direct and clear. Um, I, Even though the answer to your question is yes, I want Muslims to have that intellectual bravery. I want them to be able to uh, stand out and say, yeah, fine, you know, uh, we, uh, we are at odds with what you guys believe. And remember, you know, if you don't draw your battle lines and you uh -huh. retreat, you will go back and eventually have to fight anyway. So, for example, if we hypothetically go with, okay, yeah, evolution, yeah, Darwinism, yeah, we'll accept it. Eventually, they'll come for the night journey. How does the night journey fit with physics? How does the night journey with uh, journey uh, fit with um, you know Einsteinian relativity? Uh, if we have this body of this Burak. Uh, you know, how much fuel does it need at this speed? Won't we have disintegration? Was it made of uh, organic matter? You know, you can have, like, who cares? The fact is we have to eventually have the discussion between supernaturalism and naturalism. So it's better if the bull's in front of you that you grab it by the horns, you put it on the floor, rather than you run away and then you have to do the same thing. Right. <laughs> the difference is by you running away, you've probably empowered the bull. So, yeah. you know, like that's where come from. I want to instill us. That's my main aim, inshallah. All right, thank you so much. Jazakallah khair.